either. Like my profile said, hi, my name's Hugh. I like dogs. That's it, guys. Because that's what fucking works, right? Like my profile should say is like, hi, my name's Hugh. My friends call me HIV. Promise, no STDs. Um, I think we all live in a simulation and girls who carry rape whistles are conceited. Um, <laughs> Right? I've been in handcuffs seven times, not counting sexual encounters. Uh, you know, that, that's what my profile should say. But instead, it's like, hi, my name's Hugh, and I have two fucking corgis because I like to pretend I'm the next queen. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what fucking, it's so stupid. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm from Levittown. Uh, any of you guys familiar that's not from here? It's basically a World War II town created by a Jewish guy. Now we don't let any of them in. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, you know, so it's... I'm basically the product of like a like Brooklyn white trash meets like a Levittown white trash, and that's where my family came together. So, um... We were having like this this dilemma the other day, so I came home and uh, you know my mom's like, we need to talk, and I'm like, oh shit, like what happened? Did she find the drugs? Like did someone die? And uh, she goes, no, Hugh, the hornets are back, and I don't know suburban like suburbia, like hornets are a big fucking deal, right? So like. She just starts, like, motor-mouthing, because my mom's, like, completely paranoid schizophrenic, you know? So she's like, the last time the hornets were back, they crawled up the wall, and they stung you while you were sleeping, and we didn't know if you were allergic to bees, and they father's too fucking cheap to pay for them, and it's $250 for an exterminator. Do you want to pay for the fucking exterminator? And did you ever pay someone to shut the fuck up? <laughs> do you guys want to do that to me right now? I'm taking offers. <laughs> so... I took out all the money in my wallet, right? I just give it to my mom, I'm here, pay for the fucking exterminator. I just don't want to hear it. Like, what, I'm going to pay more in fucking Excedrin than what I'm going to give you for an exterminator. So she goes right into the back room. My dad's watching TV, right? And she just starts waving the money in his face. See, you cheap motherfucker. I told you your son would pay for it. You never fucking pay for anything. And my dad's looking at me like, what are you doing to me, right? So now he's from Brooklyn, like he's not used to fucking hornets, like so he, and, and he's not much of a problem solver. So he, you know, this is in July, so he fucking, he's in his flip flops, shorts, tank top, you know, like the Levittown uniform, and so he finds a stick, a shirt, some lighter fluid, and he just fucking finds a nest. He lights this bitch up like it's the Fourth of July, right? There's flaming hornets flying around. They're stinging him in the face, right? He's not breaking eye contact with my mom. He's like, is this what you wanted? Is this what you wanted, you know? So my mom, she's crazy, right? She's the psychopath. So she comes out, she's in a full snowsuit. It's July, it's full snowsuit. She, put, she takes a plastic bag and she puts it over her head. She ties it off with a scarf. She's like, she's like, Hugh, I'm starting to get woozy in this thing. I can't fucking breathe. And like, I'm just staring, like, you know, the, my dad, he pulls out a fucking pocket knife, right? Cause we're always armed in Levittown. And he just starts poking holes in the bag, you know? Getting a little close to the eyes. I'm like, that's it, this is it. This is how daddy goes to jail, finally. This is, <laughs> this is what we deal with in Levittown. Does anyone else have a family like this or is this just me? All right, cool. Um, just me? Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna be your host at MC tonight. So my name's Hugh Murray. Uh, we're gonna get this show going, man. Your next comic, very funny guy. He's the host of the Adult Babies Podcast. Please put your hands together for Brendan Ryan. Come on, let him hear it. What's up, guys? How are you? I like this crowd. You guys, you guys get it. You guys are a fun crowd. You guys, you guys are like a horse that can't be broke. I like this crowd. You, you're, you're ready to hang out and have fun. All right, cool. Uh, I like what you guys eating mashed potato. That's a big meal for a comedy club. That's I like it. You guys are going out to eat tonight. Fuck. I started smoking pot again recently. All right, cool. You guys have heard of the stuff. Yeah. It was recommended to me by my parents, which is weird. Anyone here have been peer pressured by mom and dad? That's confusing. 
They told me I need to relax. I'm too stressed. I was like, maybe you guys aren't stressed enough. I'm 30 and I live in your basement. Also, I'm 37 and I just lied about my age. I'm actually 40. Uh, and I don't think drugs are the answer. I don't know. That's how my parents are, though. They're like old hippies. For my birthday this year, they got me CBD oil and a weighted blanket. I feel like that's all you need to know about how I'm living my life. I didn't even know what the weighted blanket was. I was like, what does this thing do? Is it gonna make me stronger while I'm napping? Yeah. Turns out the weighted blanket is just an anti-anxiety blanket and will help you sleep or sleep better while you're napping, right? I'm like all those regular blankets that have been keeping me up for days and riddling me with anxiety. I'm at the age where all my friends are getting married and having kids. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like every day I lose another friend to childbirth. That's where I... All my friends are dads now. I have more in common with their kids at this point. What am I going to talk to a dad about? Trips to the Home Depot? I don't even know what Spackle does, okay? They're all buying homes now. Everybody has a house. My last major purchase was a denim coat, okay? <laughs> And it's like changed the whole dynamic of our relationship. Like the same guy that used to sell me weed, he's now talking to me about adjustable rate mortgages. He's like, Brendan, this house, this neighborhood, how much equity am I gonna gain? I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means, okay? I live with my mom, I don't know how much equity you're gonna gain. I know how much dignity I'm gonna lose the next time my mom folds my underwear. That's where I'm at in life, all right? Some of these people even threw themselves a housewarming party. Okay, this is basically a party that new homeowners will throw for themselves, congratulating themselves on buying a house, where then they invite all their friends who can't afford a house to come over and bring them gifts. Like, what's new with you, Brendan? Apparently I'm furnishing your house. That's what's new with me. You really want to know what's new with me, Susan? I had asked my mom to split the money on this toaster because I bounced my last three checks and I just got diagnosed with gout. Things aren't good. Things are not good. Even their kids have better toys than I had. You know, the toys that I grew up with would not fly in today's playground scene. They wouldn't. I had stuff like Skip It. You guys remember Skip It? Yeah, fuck yeah. If you don't remember Skip It, it looked like an old school prison ball and chain but it was purple for some reason. You put it on your ankle and you skipped it. That's all you did. Then they came out with the deluxe version, right? It had a counter on it. Told you how many times you skipped it. That was a big deal in the mid 90s. Today, not so impressive. You couldn't roll up to the playground today like, hey man, I just skipped it eight times. The other kids are gonna be like, wow, cool. Check out my drone. It disrupts airspace. Have fun skipping it. When I was a kid, I got hit by a car while chasing an ice cream truck. That's who I am, thank you for that. I think that guy's an ice cream truck driver, I don't know. But that's when I first realized I was gonna be a chubby guy for the rest of my life, you know? Skinny people don't have those types of stories. They don't. You never go up to a thin person like, how'd you get so thin? You eat right, you work out. They're never gonna be like, well, it's a funny story. When I was a kid, I was chasing an ice cream truck. And then I got mowed over by a Hyundai Elantra. <laughs> Ever since then, I stay away from sweets. This is the 90s as well, so this wasn't even the weirdest part of my day. The weirdest part of my day was I was with another kid who volunteered to go get my mom. And then he got the wrong mom. How the fuck does that, how do you have the confidence to be like, stay right there, I'll get your mom. And then get on his bike like, I wonder who his mom is. I'm just laying on the pavement. I'm like, that's not my mom, that's Phil's mom. What is Philip's mom doing here? And the look of relief on Philip's mom's face when she realized it wasn't her dumb son. Her son's doing much better. He's got a job with a 401k. He's not at a, a giggle room telling childhood trauma stories. I was on Facebook recently. You guys been on that website? <laughs> I'm not 
<laughs> no, I was on there. I joined them. I, I joined this Facebook group called the Massapequa Moms. Yeah. Yeah. Massapequa Moms. It's a place where moms can get together and talk about today's real issues. <laughs> like we're getting over a pandemic, whatever the hell that was. The world is generally on fire, but please God, has anyone seen half-length spaghetti from Barilla? Because Dawn can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I'm not a mom from Massapequa, but I was able to infiltrate the system. I got in there. I got in there. To get into the Massapequa Moms Facebook group, it's really easy. I had to fill out a questionnaire. Uh, the third question was just, why don't people stop at stop signs? I just wrote Biden. They're like, all right, you're in. <laughs> oh, God. I don't go on a lot of dates. I, I went on a first date recently, though, uh, and I decided to take this girl to trivia night. Uh-oh. I know. <laughs> Not a good idea. Here's what I was thinking. Oh, no. Here's what I was thinking. This is going to show her I'm fun. I'm spontaneous. I interact well with people, right? In reality, all I showed her is I don't know history. I don't know science. I don't know film. I don't know... But I showed her I'm an idiot. That's what I showed her, okay? You can't take a first date to trivia night, guys. You can't do it. You're showing all your cards on day one. Sure, it shows you're fun and spontaneous. It also shows her you don't know how to spell spontaneous. All right, you guys have been a lot of fun, guys. Give it up for your host, you Murray! You know, for my man, Brendan Ryan. All right, we're going to keep this show rolling. Your next comic, he's the host of the Royds Revenge Podcast. Please put your hands together for Rob Hall. Good evening, everybody! We are Rob Hall and the Double B Band. Wife and a hitman. She was looking good. She was hella pretty. She seduced me with the way that she danced. Things get hot. Things get heavy. Then she undid my pants and then she left. <laughs> She just started laughing at me. <laughs> I said, I'll give you something to laugh about. And I wrapped my hands around her throat. And it just kept getting tighter. Until she stopped struggling. <laughs> Thank you. That song's called The Way She Danced. Yeah. Much like a cannibalistic protein shake, I have a way with women. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite color? Green. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Blue. Nice. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Yellow. Orange. Yellow. Pink. <laughs> I'm playing the blues. Oh. You're supposed to say blue. <laughs> Did Buddy Guy release an album called Damn Right? I've got the yellows. <laughs> And since you people don't appreciate the blues, you're gonna get some blues. <laughs> Why did the doctor have to touch my wiener? Why did the doctor have to touch my wiener? Side demeanor when she pulled down my pants. She 
you touched my wiener. I don't understand the point of this test, but who am I to question my optometrist? <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't go to doctors in your own family, you know? <laughs> Alright, here's a song about my ex-girlfriend. When Plague 47 came sweeping through, it killed the love that I once knew. Blood seeped out of every pore. I couldn't begin to explain the gore. Her fingernails split one by one. She burnt if she stepped in the sun. She lost every lock of her golden hair. She soiled every pair of her underwear. Her eyes grew back and her lips turned blue. Her large intestines snapped in two. Her skin had boils, her face had zits. Her spit was sweat and her sweat was piss. She thought she was getting better, but her vagina spilled out all her guts. She cried for help, but no one came. Cause she was poor in America. The joke there's our healthcare system. Yeah, yeah I think healthcare is a human right because I'm a libtard cut. Now, yeah, I don't understand why the term cuck is an insult. I mean, happy wife, happy life, right? Yeah, what's the expression? It takes a lot to laugh, it takes a bull to cry. <laughs> uh. I got a question for everyone tonight. <laughs> Have you ever been high? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! You can do better than that. <laughs> Have you ever been high? <laughs> So high you could hear sounds. Have you ever been so high you could taste food? Have you ever been high on life? Come on, who's been high on life? Yeah. Bring it in. Have you ever been so high you could smell odor? Never been so high you could feel things. Have you ever been so high you tore off your own nose by the nostrils and fed it to the neighbor's cat and then accused the neighbor's cat of stealing your nose and the only proper way of ben getting vengeance was by killing the neighbor's cat and taking its nose for your own? So now you're walking around with a bloody cat nose on your face, but you're not British or anything because you just literally sewed a bloody cat nose onto your face and you're walking around calling yourself feline Phil and the cat blood starts to mix with your blood and they find you dead in an alleyway from all the cat blood diseases you can drink that! <laughs> Have you ever been high on life? I'll be selling life after the show. You meet me out back. 18 plus, I don't ID. <laughs> Okay, maybe. <laughs> I'm a teacher. No, wait, I'm a librarian. I used to be a teacher. But I'm a librarian. Some people follow their... Some people chase their dreams. I follow my fetishes. Someone raise their hand. This isn't a classroom. Do you have a question? I'm a teacher who became a librarian. Oh, let's go! Yeah, but yeah, like I said, I follow my fetishes. 
<laughs> I'm not smart enough to be a doctor, so podiatrist was out. <laughs> That's a feat joke. <laughs> Why are people into feet? Because I hate myself. And according to Freud, the doctor, he said it's because they're phallic. Yeah, he said that feet look like dicks. Uh, is there anything that didn't look like a dick to this guy? I imagine cloud watching with Dr. Freud was not a very fun activity. Hey, you know what that one looks like? Another dick? Like the last four? Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> they say you get your fetishes from your parents. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that makes sense that my mom's a bootlicker. <laughs> like, when I was a teacher, my mom used to always tell me when the police test was coming up. I'd be like, Mom, I'm a teacher. I have summers off. Same chances of being shot. Yeah. But summer's off. <laughs> so I'm gonna end with this song about my parents. My dad's here, by the way. I find a movie to set the mood. I'm gonna change my attitude. Then as I stroke a little more, the knob turns on the bedroom door and I cry Hey mom, get out! Oh God, get out! Hey mom, get out! Don't you ever knock! Hey mom, am I as big as dad? Thank you everybody, I've been Rob Hall, give it up your head! And the dick of his dad. Yeah! I would know. All right, you guys ready for more show? Yeah! I need some more energy than that. You guys ready for your next comic? Yeah! He's a very funny guy, man. He goes by the last OG. Please clap it up for him or you give me another black guy. Please give it up for Chuck Hudson. Yeah! You about the dumbest host out. <laughs> I was on the last OG. But, uh, who calls himself the last OG? That's the first way you get shot. It's like, it's the easiest way to die. This guy is the last OG. There's no more OGs out there. He done killed them all. Give it up for this one. No, stupid. Uh, <laughs> how y'all doing? Y'all good? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. He just told me not to black up the show. And I'm like, this motherfucker's trying to pay me a chicken. I'm like, you started it, fuck you. <laughs> Shit going down. <laughs> um, uh, these days, I'm, I'm staying with this white girl. I mean, technically, she's my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. She's cool, though. Like, she don't fuck with the second level of the refrigerator. That's my level. <laughs> It says my name across the refrigerator on the second level. It says Truck Hudson. Nobody fucks with it. I just drink orange juice down the pulp and put it back. Nobody fucks with it. It's cool. you know? But I'm thinking about moving out. I'm thinking about moving out because uh, she's a cat lady. And um, yeah, people with cats are stupid. Yeah. If you own a cat, fuck you and your cat. Your cat's a dick. You got a dickhead cat at home. That's what you got. Like, this, this is what cats do. This is what they do. It's like, oh, is this, is this your favorite thing in the world? No. Oh, this, this is a picture of your mom? She's beautiful. Oh, she's not with us anymore. Oh. No. Cats are dicks, man. Like, who lays out in the refrigerator just hoping his fur flies into your lasagna? That's a dick move. Can't even take a shit in my house. This cat is pouring at the fucking door like, 
Take the fuck out of here, cat. <laughs> like, who teaches cats to follow niggas around the house? <laughs> it's a weird thing to teach a cat, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's been some uh, new things happening in my household. Like, I married this bitch about 10 years ago. So, that white lady I was talking about is my wife. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we got kids, shit is weird around my house. <laughs> she kind of an asshole in the morning. She like stands in the doorway after she wakes up for work. Like 5.30 in the morning, she's just staring. She makes noises with her mouth, she's like, <sighs> <laughs> Still sleeping. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I don't do shit all day. I'm a comic. Get the fuck out of here. Go to work. Go to fucking work, man. Fucking chase my dream, caught it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I did today? I fucking Google myself. Awesome. I was like, yeah. You was on the last OG. Not the last OG. You, you're not the last OG. You was on that motherfucker. <laughs> fucking host is a liar. He's like, this guy calls himself the last OG. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I, I don't know. It bothered me. It bothered me. We got kids, though. We got kids. You never know what you're going to get in an interracial couple. You just don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Like, my first daughter came out. She was my complexion. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You did that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fucking did it. My second daughter came out. This lady's complexion right here. This white lady in the front. I've been chasing this little bitch for three years with a heat lamp. Like, hey, where you going? Come here. Where you going? Come here. Oh. Come here. Oh. No, you're a dumb kid. You, you, you afraid of warmth? You're a dummy. You don't mean a dummy. <laughs> No, I love both my kids equally. I love them both. I, I really do love my kids. Don't, don't, don't think I'm an asshole like that. I'm an asshole in different ways. Listen, I love my kids. I'm just saying, like, I don't want to, like, leave out of the mall and people think I stole a white kid. That's weird shit. You know? It's weird. I, don't know. I, don't know. I, love, I love all these super, superhero movies that are coming out. Yeah, same they, here, bro. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> We're not gonna step on five minutes, are we? He's like, yo, I'm with you on that. Please don't be with me. Just stay the fuck there. <laughs> oh, shit. He just couldn't wait to say something. You just fucking... Uh, huh? He's what? He's drunk? Uh, are you his spokeswoman? Yeah. <laughs> I'm his attorney. And, and his sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh, now she started. What? Y'all sponsoring each other? You want me to get out of here? Huh? What'd you say? One minute. Oh, the show's gonna start in one minute. I'm just being, I'm being a dick. Don't worry. I'm just, I'm sorry. Listen, the earth is flat. Who gives a fuck, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? That, that corner table's like, yeah, we're on a flat surface. Put your Windex away. Shit. What the fuck is wrong with that table? Oh my god. Look, I like all the superhero movies. I, I just did. The one I didn't like was Superman. I think that's some horse shit. Like, first off, the concept of Superman. I was just like, I mean, come on. Like he, he's, he's all about the sun. Like that's where he gets his power from, right? White guy, right? No shit. No melanoma. He just <laughs> out here in the sun and he gets powers from it. Sound like a black guy to me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, half the room is like, yeah, the other half the room is really uncomfortable. I don't know. Um, I really think Superman's a bitch though. I really do. I, like, you can't kill General Zod with MMA. That's stupid. Um, <laughs> It's like, this dude can kill everybody in this room with his eyes. You guys realize that, right? He can jump over Long Island like it's nothing. He just... He can fucking blow your head off, sir, as you're eating the wings. Just destroy your dome, you know what I mean? This nigga's scared of green rocks. What the fuck is that about? Like, my cousin used to smoke that shit. That's bullshit. You know what I mean? Never in my life been scared of green rocks. Uh, uh, uh. All right, listen, uh, I got to get out of here, so... Mm -hmm.
I'm going to email the rest of these jokes to you guys. <laughs> My name is Truck Hudson. Peace. <laughs> I heard it's a TV show. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm getting dumber as I get older. I don't know if you know this, but like I, I walked into this place earlier. I was at the bar and they're like, you want anything to drink? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll take a water if you have it. <laughs> like, yeah, have you heard of water? You know, that thing that we all fucking drink every day to live? Like, I'm just getting dumber and dumber. You guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. More energy, I need more energy. You guys ready for your next comedian? He runs a monthly show out of New York City called Lost Lighters. Please put your hands together for my friend Renee Fuentes. <laughs> guys, keep it going for Hugh Murray, everybody. Make some noise. Hugh's the, the, the poster boy for the heroin epidemic in Long Island, guys. How you say? How you guys doing? I, uh, <laughs> how you guys doing? Make some noise for yourselves. Come on, make some noise. I love coming out to Long Island. I, uh, I often get told I look like a creative character from Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Right? I know what I look like. I, uh, it's not too bad, though, because, like, I don't know, I never skateboarded when I was younger. I mean, I tried to, at least, but I didn't have any friends to go to the skate park with. It was very lonely. You know, so I downloaded this app to help me find friends for that reason. It's called Grinder. <laughs> you guys familiar with the app, Grinder? It was weird because I couldn't find any friends to skateboard with, but like everybody was trying to fuck me. You know, I, I met up with this guy from the app. We were just trying to grind two different half pipes. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I'm originally from Long Give it up for Long Island, guys. Yeah. I left. No, I, uh, I live in. I live in. I live in the city now. I live in Brooklyn. I live in Flatbush, and uh, it was good for me. It was a move. Was good for me. I love living in the city. Uh, I love the people in from Brooklyn. You know, people from Brooklyn are so proud to be from Brooklyn. I think that's really cool. The other day, I heard this guy. The other day, walking in the street, he just goes, "Yo, I'm so Brooklyn, my spirit animal." is a mix between a bodega cat and a parking ticket. But I'm from Long Island, like, why am I gonna play that game? You know, I'm so Long Island, my spirit animal is a mix between a racist dog and a dose of Narcan, you know? And, uh, I still be repping Long Island in the city though, guys. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you guys. I like I like telling people I'm from the part of Long Island where they shot the first episode to catch a predator. Yeah. You guys know that? You guys know the first episode was filmed on Long Island? You guys know this is your culture, guys. We're proud of it. No, but that has the first episode was ever, the first episode to catch a predator was filmed like 20 minutes from my my childhood home. And I love that show, but I can never relate to it much growing up, you know? Like, no one ever tried to molest me as a kid. I don't know, it was something I did. Was I not approachable? I don't know. I, uh, I was on all the apps. I don't know. I, uh, you know, I never got molested as a kid. So I started this support group for those of us who are molested as children. It's called Hashtag Me Neither. Uh, I love doing comedy in the city. You do some weird shows in the city. Sometimes you do a club like this and it's awesome and then you do like a weird bar show. You know, I, uh, I did this show the other day. The, sh the name of the show is called Allegedly. That was the name of the show. It's called Allegedly. And I thought, I was like, wow, it was really cool to do a show that's the same name as R. Kelly's last album. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that, but like R. Kelly, he dropped an album from prison. It was called uh, Allegedly. I like how R. Kelly had the same marketing for that album that O.J. Simpson did for his book tour, right? Like, R. Kelly was just like, hey, I didn't fuck these kids, but if I did, 
it would have been to the soundtrack. I, uh, I, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm from Long Island. I, uh, I grew up in a Hispanic house, only Latinos in the house tonight. Just to help. All right, I, uh... <laughs> now, I grew up in a Hispanic household. Definitely achieved my, 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 my being right now. You know, I had a lot of women in my life to look up after growing up. I was the only boy in the household. I had, like, two older sisters, my mom, my grandma, my dad's mistress. <laughs> it was a lot to keep up with, you know? Definitely affected my dating. I like dating girls with ethnic backgrounds. I like giving them cute little ethnic nicknames. I dated a Spanish girl. She's my spicy Latina. I dated a black girl. She's my ebony queen. I date white girls. They get mad at me because I call them my little colonizers. <laughs> I think women are great, though. Give it up for all the women in the house tonight. Make some noise for you. I think women are great. I think women go through a lot of inequalities today. Don't you say, miss? What do you say? Women go through a lot of inequalities. I agree with you guys. I think women go through so much. I like to do my part to help combat those inequalities that women face. So I've been practicing this thing lately. It's called semen retention. You guys ever heard of this before, sir? You ever heard of semen retention? You're just like, I'm busting my nuts. I don't know about you. I, uh... <laughs> For those who don't know what it is, that's when I, as a man, I would refrain from climaxing during sex. But, like, I still pleasure my partner, right? You know, so this way, no one comes. <laughs> so I'm single right now. And I, uh... Make some noise if you're in a relationship. Make some noise. <laughs> Make some, noise if, make some noise if you're single. You know what's crazy? There's less single people, but you're just louder about it. <laughs> now I think I think you gotta go through both in life. You gotta be single. You gotta be in a relationship. You gotta experience heartbreak. You learn the most through that. I think so. You know, like when, when my last relationship it ended. You know, ended pretty abruptly. I didn't get a lot of closure from it. Felt like it fucked me up for a bit. Like I needed the closure to move on and be like, you know, recover from it. Thought I did. But then I dated someone else after that. She gave me closure. Like she told me what went wrong when it ended. She was just like, Renee, I thought you were a great guy. But like I felt like you weren't really into it. Like you were always in and out whenever you wanted to be. I wasn't a priority in your life. Your ego was so inflated that you didn't see that I was drowning in a sea of my own unhappiness. And I remember being like, wow. I didn't want to know any of that. <laughs> Like, next time, just ghost me. It's fine. Give like, your opinions to yourself. I don't know. I, uh... <laughs> Dating in the city is weird. I was seeing this girl over the summer, and uh, she introduced me to this thing called We Vibe. You guys know what this is? We Vibe, ladies? Anyone? For those who don't know, We Vibe is a smart vibrator. It's a vibrator that comes with an app, so you and your partner could be in two different places. You guys can use it. You know, you just put it in her pussy and there's like a touch pad feature to it. So like the other guy, he just draws like circles, squiggly lines, X's, and it just like replicates those like motions in the girl's pussy. It's called, it's called WeVibe. Write it down, guys. I, uh, I was using it with this girl the other day and she goes, oh my God, like Renee, like what are you doing to me right now? And I'm just like, ah, I'm just drawing swastikas. <laughs> She goes, oh my god, that's so wrong, but it feels so right, you know? Uh, <laughs> if you guys didn't like that joke, Kanye West wrote it for me. I, uh... <laughs> wow, I, uh, it's been cool. I, uh, I was watching this YouTube documentary the other day, and I don't know if it's real or not, because it's just on YouTube, so what's the credibility, you know? I, uh, but the, it was about how, like, the first time a woman getting her pussy eaten was ever documented. Oh, yeah. It was the year 1952. You believe that, 1952? That seems kind of late to the game, right? 
Like, there's like 5,000 year old hieroglyphics of like a man getting his fucking dick sucked, but like a woman getting pleasure in 1952. Like, it took two world wars, Hitler, and a depression. <laughs> For men to be like, ah, maybe we should just taste it, you know? I, uh... <laughs> this one's for the fellas. I, uh... <laughs> the guys in here, I would just, just by a round of applause, any guy in here, do you guys have guy friends in your life that you tell them I love you to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think guys should have guy friends in their life that say, hey man, like, I love you, I think it's important. I think guys who don't, they suffer from this thing called toxic masculinity, right? I have the exact opposite problem. I suffer from this thing called masculine positivity. I'm too loving towards my guy friends, it's weird. I, uh, like last week, one of my best friends, he, uh, he fucking, uh, he had a really rough week. He got like the, the he, his girlfriend broke up with him, his dog died, he got fired from his job. It was a rough week, I took him out to dinner just trying to cheer him up, I, nothing was working, to, I didn't know what to say to him, you know, I didn't know what to, how to help him. But then it dawned on me, I was like, what's the one thing every guy wants to hear every day? And I, it dawned on me, I was like, listen, man, like, Brandon, I know you've been going through a lot, but I want you to know, no matter how bad your week is, you have a huge cock. <laughs> your cock is massive, bro. I don't care about your problems. Just keep mowing that thing around town, man. That's not the best advice you can always give someone, right? Like a few weeks ago, I was at my grandma, she asked me if I could drive her to chemo. And I couldn't at a show. I was like, listen, grandma, I can't drive you to chemo. But I want you to know, you have a huge cock, grandma. I, uh... <laughs> listen, my name is Renee Fuentes. Enjoy the rest of your show. Good up for Dave Murray, everybody. How we doing? We enjoying the show? Yeah. Hell yeah. You guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah! A little more. You gotta do a little more. You guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah. She's a very funny lady. She was on the Long Island lamp off. Please put your hands together for Bridget Kavanaugh. Yeah. Right. Thanks, guys. Guys, it's nice to be out as late as we want, right? Yeah, like it's kind of crazy we were to be home by 10 o'clock because of all the COVID restrictions. I mean, truthfully, it didn't change that much for me. Um, the only thing that was different was I just had to get drunk earlier. Right? <laughs> like right from work, I'm like, happy hour, we gotta go, we are running out of time. Right? But now I guess we're back to making our bad decisions at like 3 in the morning. And that's great because that's easy to explain away, right? Like, oh, it was late, I didn't realize what I was doing. But before, you go out, you get a little drunk, you text your ex, hey, you up? And he's just like, yeah, it's 8.45. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that. I, uh, I don't like the kids are getting cell phones at such a young age now. Uh, my first cell phone was what was called the Firefly. Has anyone heard of this? Yeah, yeah right? Uh, it had the bare minimum features to be considered a cell phone. Right? It did two things. First, you could program one number into it, which was my mom's, and then the only other thing you could do was dial 911. So if I couldn't get in touch with my mom, my only other option was to call 911. All right, so it was like, 911, what's your emergency? And I just wanted to let you guys know I'm on my way home from school. And they're like, please stop calling here for that. <laughs> My mom got me that phone. My mom used to get mad about a lot of weird things when I was a kid. Like, I remember, like, me and my sister, we can be enjoying, like, a perfectly good day, minding our own business, and all of a sudden we just hear, Hey! Who rented a fucking movie? Because right? you saw that extra two ninety nine on the Verizon bill? Right? This $3 sends that woman into a tailspin. Okay? Like, this is the same woman. She's spending, like, $80 on a face cream to get rid of wrinkles. Right, and I can't watch Sister of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> it's always a problem. But like, that was the only way we had to rent movies at the time, right? You either like rented them on the TV, or you had the early version of Netflix where you'd order the movie, and then they would mail you the DVD, right? Great times. Like, think about the patience we used to have. 
I mean, you just, we used to get the U.S. Postal Service involved, and we'd order the movie, and we'd wait. We don't have patience like that now. Now if I'm sitting on Netflix and that little red ring goes around one too many times, I want to fucking kill somebody. It's ridiculous. Like, we just, because we get used to, like, being too easy, you know? Like, I remember when Netflix switched from, like, being the mail service to just being on the TV, right? We're all so thrilled, like, wow, this is so convenient, right? We get used to that. Now if I'm like sitting on my couch and my remote is out of my immediate reach, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, wow, nothing can ever just be fucking easy anymore. It's horrible. Life's too easy, man. We don't have to leave our house to do anything anymore. We don't have to leave our house to shop. Like we shop online, right? Which honestly I love because I hate shopping in person because it's a really just a stressful experience for me. Um, the store I hate to go into the most is a uh, Sephora, oh, right? Yeah, because like I don't wear a lot of makeup, right? Not because I don't want to, but because I don't know how to do it, yeah. right? Like years ago, my sister looked at me. She goes, you know, you don't really have the eyelids for eyeshadow. <laughs> Which is insane because the only requirement for wearing eyeshadow is simply having eyelids. <laughs> so I gave up. I didn't even try after that. So like I hate going into a Sephora because like I'm a blank canvas to these employees. Right? Like I walk in just like pale, dark circles under my eyes and they're all just looking at me like, wow, you're so brave. <laughs> I just want to put everything on me. So I avoid them, but like I did have to ask a woman once like to help me pick a shade for my foundation and that was the biggest mistake of my life, oh, yeah. right? Because she just looks at me, she goes, well, you're pale. <laughs> no, like you're extremely pale. Like, like you're the lightest shade, that's how pale you are. Like she was really driving home, I had the complexion of a dead body. <laughs> Right, like she grabs the lightest shade for me. And I don't know if I have any other pale girls in the room here. Yes, thank you, thank you guys. But I don't like the names they give us for our foundation, right? Because this bitch handed me something called porcelain. Okay? What the fuck is that? Like all the tan, beautiful girls, they get shit called like Fiji sunset and like bronze sands, right? Like that shit's sexy. That reminds me of like a beach vacation, right? I get porcelain. Like, that just reminds people of, like, a room full of creepy dolls. It's horrible. And, like, I get excited in the summer because, like, I get a little tan. I get to go up the next half shade, right? Until I get to see what that's called. Right? Because it's just fair. Right? They're like, don't get too excited, Casper bitch. It's horrible. And like the most annoying thing about the whole experience is like, porcelain matches me perfectly. <laughs> I have that shit on tonight. I, uh, I work in healthcare, guys, because I'm a fucking hero. Thank you. I know. It's like, I have to ask for the applause now. People are like, COVID's over, go back to work, bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm an occupational therapist and uh, I work with kids and uh, yeah I like working with kids because um, they don't have the social skills holding them back from asking you anything they want to know right? like I was working with a kid the other day and he uh, he looks at me and goes uh, how old are you I said, oh, I'm 26 right and you would have thought I told this kid I had one foot in the grave that's how old I thought I was right? and because his next question to me was like uh, well do you have any kids? Like by 26, I should be a soccer mom of three. I was like, no, I don't have any kids. And he's like, um, are you married? I was like, no, I'm not married. He goes, do you have a boyfriend? Like he was getting worried for me. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't have a boyfriend. He's like, why not? And then I'm standing there and I'm like, why don't I have a boyfriend? <laughs> Right, and then I'm really getting into it. I'm like, oh, like my parents are divorced me, but that's shaping the way I'm seeing romantic relationships. And then like before I know it, this kid has me unpacking all my commitment issues. <laughs> I got defensive. I turned it around on him. I'm like, oh yeah, well, why can't you write in cursive, huh? Yeah. I want you with the fine motor skills, fucking loser. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. He just looked at me. He's like, do you even have a four hundred one k? Before you go, they make you fast, you can't eat or drink anything, right? And so like I show up 
and the woman's having a hard time finding my veins, and she's like, um, did you have any water this morning? I was going, no, I fasted, like so proud of myself, and she's like, huh, everyone has to get a little water, it's kind of common sense, but I help me out. I was like, okay, bitch. Right? Like, phlebotomists are the only people who could be bad at their job, and it's your fault. Right? Every time I go, they tell me I have bad veins. Like, what other professional is doing this? Right, imagine you go to your accountant to get your taxes done, and he's just like, no, I can't do this. You have shitty money. <laughs> Never happened. So she takes my blood, and then she tells me, um, we're going to leave a urine sample today. Which feels like a dig, because at this point, she knows I haven't had any water. Right? But I'll play along. I take the cup. And she tells me, um, but our bathroom's broken. Oh. Right. What is that, a challenge? <laughs> you don't be squatting over this little cup. You ask any woman, leaving a urine sample is a fucking disaster, right? Like, we don't have the luxury of aiming. So we put the cup where we think is right. And then move it when we start pissing all over our hands. And then you hope you have enough left to meet the requirements of a urine sample. Right? It's fucking bullshit. It's I need it, man. Yeah, my, uh, my doctor actually just told me recently, too, that I have IBS, which, if you don't know, is irritable bowel syndrome. I'm so hot, right? Oh, another, another girl who absolutely shits her fucking pants. Cool, cool, cool. personality not enough right like i'm baseline irritated all the time now i feel my intestines are like hey we're mad too you know? and like i just like remember when my doctor like was explaining to me what ibs was he's like you know in normal people when they eat food their colon sends a signal to the rest of their body that everything is fine you don't have to go to the bathroom but in you when you eat food your colon responds like a bunch of angry parents busting a high school party. <laughs> you eat something that's just like, all right, everyone has two minutes to get the fuck out. <laughs> it's horrible. It's funny, I was actually, I was at a party recently and then like this girl was talking to me, we were talking about comedy. She's like, you know, you really like must get a lot of guys like hitting on you after shows. Like, you know, you must get a lot of guys from this. No, actually. Right? Like, my set is not about how, like, cute and fun and flirty I am, right? Like, if anything, the main takeaway for a guy is just like, wow, she might shit herself. <laughs> Guys, my name is Bridget Tappan. I had a lot of fun. Give it up for Bridget, guys. Very funny. She's got to run to the bathroom now. All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. Come on, you guys were so good on the last one. You guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. Awesome. Very funny guy, plays all over the Tri-State area. Please put your hands together for Devin Bramble. Yeah. What is going on, you guys? How you feeling, everybody? You feeling good? I'm feeling good. I made it up these stairs. Every time I take these stairs, it's like a test of faith. Because... I do not think they can hold me, but they do. Uh, it's awesome. Guys, let's get personal. I want to find out about you guys. Any dog people in the audience? Any dog people? Anyone who'd like to be reincarnated as a dog? Is that anyone's? Yeah, you see, here, here's the thing. Part of that seems nice. Part of that feels like it would be a step back, becoming someone's servant. Like, my grandparents did a lot of marching, and I feel like that would be not the optimal move. But recently I was in a Petco and I saw behind the counter they had dog plan B and dog CBD. So now I'm coming back as a dog, you guys. They're just getting high and coming inside. Like they truly, they truly are our freest Americans. I wanna know, why is it locked up though? Like what slutty golden retriever is like, oh God, I think that black lab from the park came at me. I can't go home like this. 
I gotta go steal some Plan B from the Petco. And I'm gonna get a little diet high afterwards. That's gonna be dope. Yeah, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> that shit always uh, weirds me the absolute fuck out, you guys. I, uh, I'll tell you guys something about me, though. I, uh, I'm a little bit horny and a little bit suicidal, as you could probably guess. But I'm a little bit nerdy as well, like a big fantasy of mine. I want to be seduced and then murdered by a mythological wood nymph. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want a forest sprite to have her way with me in the bushes and then drown me in a shallow forest stream. <laughs> and I can't wait that she unveils it too, right? She's like, I've laid a trap, I've set a snare. My bosom is what brought you here. And as you take your final breath, no, it was your dick that brought your death. And I gotta be like, listen here, lady. I came here to be blown and then bludgeoned in that order. I came here to be molested and then massacred. If that's not gonna happen, I see a centaur with her titties out, and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make moves. I am going to make moves. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I, I'm getting older, you guys, and I've been thinking about having kids. Anybody have kids here? Any kids, people? Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about having kids, but I feel like I feel like I couldn't. I was a loser growing up, right? And I'm a loser now, and I feel like my biggest fear is that I'll have a kid who's super cool and popular. He'll come home, he's like, Dad, they made me captain of the football team. And then I asked out my crush, the head cheerleader, and she said yes. And I gotta be like, son, I am so disappointed in you. I raised you on a diet of anime, fast food, and my own mediocrity. And this is what you do with that gift. I bet you're not even depressed. He's like, depressed? But why, father? Life is the hope that springs eternal. Get the fuck out of my house. Who are you? Why can't you be more like your 400-pound brother? He's the virgin I raised. You? I don't... I don't know what happened to you. I actually saw this ridiculous PSA on the way over here. It was like a family PSA. This woman's in the supermarket and she trips and she falls. She gets up and she's fine, but she turns to her family and goes, do you think if I lie and say it was her, they'll give us some money? And the husband goes, honey, that's immoral. And she has a little son, he goes, mommy, that's illegal. And I felt, felt so bad for her that she'd raised this pussy and married this loser. Like I... <laughs> Not my fucking family, you guys. We're getting that money any means necessary. Any means necessary. <laughs> For real, I don't know if I can protect kids from the things that attack them, like pedophiles and ice cream trucks and peacocks at the zoo. Have you guys, you guys ever seen the free range peacocks at the zoo? They're like the only free animals at the zoo and yet they're the most pissed off. They're always trying to bite someone's finger off or something. I figured out why. Apparently, peacocks are all males, and they mate with peahens, which are the females. And I've never seen a peahen in the zoo, which is why they're so upset, you guys. They're the only ones not getting laid. Like, they're, they're having a problem. Lions, tigers, bears, they're all fucking. They're in breeding programs. They're flying them in pussy from Cincinnati. Like, they're, they're living the dream. Meanwhile, these peacocks are just going exhibit to exhibit. Like, goddamn. Throw in a pack of pee pussy present, man. This is ridiculous. I don't know. I definitely, I definitely want to have kids. And I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm with a woman who has really strong maternal instincts. And that's great. I love that about her. I, I'm engaged with a fiance and she's really great. But sometimes it can be a bit too much. I really want to give her a child because right now I'm the child and I'm tired of being in diapers, you guys. I want to shit freely. <laughs> We hang out, we walk places, and she's like, Devin, there's a puddle, watch out, don't get wet. Which would be cute to say to a kid, but not to a real street nigga like me, you guys. That's not, like, you call me a pussy, bro. That's, that's not cool. The worst part is, I start jumping in the puddle because I'm upset. Now she's like, you're gonna get wet. I'm like, I wanna get wet. Now people think we're doing some weird mommy play shit in public. They're like, go back to Pornhub. I'm like, we were banned, man. They didn't want... <laughs> They didn't want any part of what we were selling. If, if I'm gonna make a kid, I gotta be in it for the long haul though, I have to. I'm not gonna be one of these parents that has a kid five years later, they're divorced. Like, I don't have a problem with divorce. My parents are divorced, but I'm gonna do it like them. My parents got married, like they joined the police force. 
They put in 20 honorable years and they handed in the badge and walked off into the sunset. That's that's the kind of life I'm trying to live. I don't know. Well, not like I'm not trying to get divorced, but I'm certainly not not going to do it early. I saw a custody exchange in the parking lot like 10 minutes ago. That's not the life I want to have. A woman was sitting in a car for like 10 minutes. She was pissed off. I thought it was because I was smoking weed three feet from her car, but then this guy pulls up. He gets out the car. A kid hops out. He gets into her car. They have some terse words. Then they both drive off. And I was like, damn, did I just see someone buy a white baby? This is crazy. In 2023, there's no way. But no, I was just violently high. That was a custody exchange. That was, they were just swapping the kid. That's definitely cute. That's cute for sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying being engaged, but I, uh, I also live with my mom, so. Okay. It's a weird, yeah, that's a weird duality. When you're engaged and you live with your mom, it's like, uh, it's like being the vice president. Like, there's a lot of prestige, but there's very little power. Like, I don't have control over anything, not weddings, not towels in the bathroom, nothing. Like, I'm really, I'm really just following the crowd. Yeah, I, uh, I love my I love my fiance's relationship with my mom though. They're really close, and that's dope. I'm a big fan of that. They uh, they share everything, but sometimes they can get a little too close. Recently, I told my girl I was gonna take her to uh, take her out to dinner, but then I tried to see a Marvel movie with my friends instead. She wasn't happy about that, so she texted my mom. My mom texted her back, "Wear something slutty, and then don't have sex with him." Which is crazy, my own mother doesn't know I'd rather watch a Marvel movie than have sex any day of the week. Are you fucking kidding me? Five minutes of exercise versus two hours at a cool movie theater? Drinking liquor I snuck in, blowing weed smoke in a child's face? Like, if you didn't want me to get your kid high, you shouldn't have brought him to Buzz Lightyear at 4 p.m. on a Friday. That's, that's the dev domain. That's my land. I'm excited to be here, not excited to leave. I took the bus here, you guys. I took the bus, and uh, yeah, it's not Thank you. It's not great. It's, it's pretty much survival on there. My biggest rule for the bus is I don't give up my seat for old people on the bus because if they hadn't destroyed the economy, I wouldn't be on the bus in the first place, and I'm not going to reward them for screwing me over. They're like, you're going to die working. I'm like, all right, you're going to die standing. We can do this both ways. <laughs> Yeah, I was on the bus recently and I hit the stop. The bus driver doesn't stop, right? He keeps going. I'm like, hey man, that's my stop. He goes, this is an express bus. And that was a non-express stop. The express bus does not stop at non-express stops. If you wanted to get off on a non-express stop, you should have taken a non-express bus. This is the express bus. And I was like, you could have told me to go fuck myself, man. I would have preferred that so much more. I didn't know I was dealing with the guardian of the stops. I didn't need to hear his ancient order's sacred creed. He was like, I got the stops and thus declare the non-express I will not bear. And if again you pull my string to life a child you'll never bring. Well, damn, Gandalf. I thought I was going to work and I'm going to Jamaica. This is fucked up. All right, I'm going to end on this one. As you can probably guess, I need to smoke weed smarter. If I'm not going to smoke it less, I got to smoke it smarter. I used to share weed with anybody. Recently, I was outside of this bar. I'm smoking a joint. There's this old dude next to me. He has to hit it. I give it to him. He's rubbing it in between his only two teeth. He's slobbering all over it. Then he gives it back to me. He goes, hey, man, don't tell my mom I was smoking any weed. She's coming to pick me up. Sure enough, this like 150-year-old woman shows up. He gets in the car with her, and they drive off. A couple of weeks later, I'm in that same bar telling jokes, and he's there heckling me. I get off and I go, hey man, not gonna tell your mom you were smoking weed. He goes, you don't even know how to talk to my mom. I go, yes I do. I walked over to her and said, excuse me, madam. Do you know that your son was smoking reefer cigarettes with Negroes? She said, my son would never. How do you know? I said, I'm the eponymous Negro. Twas I. All right, you guys. I've been Denver Bramble. You've been fucking amazing. Give it up for your host for all the other comics. That was great, man. Uh, you guys ready for your headliner? Yeah! That's right! Fucking sick! He's the host of the game.
Guilty Pleasure and Personals podcast. Please put your hands together for Brandon Lacaruba. What's up, fuckers? <laughs> Guys, get up to all the comics you just saw. Come the fuck on. Some of my best friends in stand-up. We couldn't get them all up, but I, that made me super happy. Especially your last comic, the Matrix Oracle himself of stand-up on Long Island, Devin Bramble. I love that guy. Guys, I, also give it up to you guys for coming out. Governors for hosting us. And your wait staff. All that jazz. All that fucking shit. And speaking of, I, I love these guys so much. And you guys know up-and-comers, uh, social media is really a big deal for us. So please find their tags after. They'll be at the bar. They'll be on my Instagram. Find their shit. Give them a follow. Means the world to us. I'm gonna be slimy and tell you all mine right now. Uh, got, pull out the phones if I don't see him out. Oh, look, that guy's got his phone out. You're recording the whole thing, just like oh yeah, really fun. You're having fun at the comedy show. Put it down, man. Fuck. I was late for that. <laughs> no, go go follow my my Instagram is at brandon.lockup. My podcast, Guilty Pleasure Personals. My OnlyFans is at Discount Ben Affleck. <laughs> It used to be chubby Ben Affleck, but we've been hitting the gym. Uh, it's only two dollars a month, guys. It's like worth it. It's a lot of tasteful Batman costume nudes and a lot of stretch marks. It's gross. I grew up fat. They don't go away. Like like moms will tell you, I'll put cocoa butter on it. That just makes me smell good. It doesn't. Seriously, like when I'm in the winter and I get pale, you know, it kind of looks like an albino watermelon on my my belly. Just stripes. But then I get tan in the summer, and I kind of look like a coffee table. People want to do shots off me. It's fucking... It's good. It's good stuff. Guys, I, I'm so happy y'all are here. I, uh... You guys like treating yourself? I like treating myself. We're at a comedy show. Of course you like treating yourself. I, uh... I think I treat myself too much. I treated myself to a divorce like eight months ago. That was... I like that. I like that a lot. When people say aw, I want to fucking punch them. I'm like, I got a second lease on life, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, that, it was weird. The weird thing about my divorce was uh, my marriage was about as long as a college semester. Which was about how long I was in college. So I just, for a while, I was like, I don't do nothing right. Like, <laughs> but it's cool, though. Like, we, you know, clean break, good terms, Papa John's. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I fucked up the good terms. Like, we weren't talking at all, you know? And uh, I, I texted my ex-wife recently. Because like I said, I've been hitting the gym. I'm doing the fucking breakup and getting in good shape thing. And I, I, I wanted to know. I hit her up. I wanted to know if she was getting in good shape, too. So I, I texted her. I was like, you also doing the breakup thing? Getting in good shape? Fully knowing that she was getting fatter. Like, I totally... <laughs> That might be mean, but this is part of my healing process, so thank you for being on my side. Thank you so much. You know, there was a lot of, a lot of drug talk on the show earlier, and I'm about it. I, I, just, I just feel like drug dealers are kind of ruining the world right now. Not the fun drugs. I'm talking about like Johnson & Johnson. Those guys. Why do we tolerate them? And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, don't fool me. This is my first half hour. All right. Um, no, like their marketing is really good because like I started doing this joke and they're, everyone in the crowd is like, Brandon's an anti-vaxxer. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, but their vaccine, I, I got to list out the things for them. They, they had the, you know, old Johnny one shot, freezing up faces, <laughs> killing women. That was no good. Then they're making that cancerous baby powder. Yeah. How about you guys? I grew up in the no tears era and they are not holding to that. Cancer makes a lot of tears. And then, you know, the cherry on top, they made heroin delicious and needle-free. Like, I, I don't... I don't like it. I like it so much that I actually have a cousin that works for Johnson & Johnson in, uh, in finance. And uh, I asked her one day if working for a demon was like a, like a conflict of interest for her. And she goes, no, you know, I just, yeah, I'm in finance. I just count all day. And I was like, okay, then why do you seem so like, you kind of like drained after work and down. And she goes, well, someone has to count the bodies, man. We got to have that data. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't like those guys. I don't like those guys at all. 
But uh, we'll get back to positive stuff. Uh, I'm divorced, and that's great. Um, weird. A little bit of a weird thing, though. Like, dating uh, over the last year was kind of weird, because, like, I... Yeah, you know, I was with my ex throughout COVID, and holy shit, COVID kicked some crazy into the air. It's fun! But there's just like way more cool, like emo, goth chicks out there. My ex-wife was so vanilla, that's, that, I like that lane. You know, especially oh, like on Long Island, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you got the stockings and the tattoos, and you know, the childhood trauma, it's exactly you need it. It's good stuff. <laughs> And I think on Long Island, it really manifests as like a, you know, the real Blink-180 Jew girls. You know, really, I like it. It's a good time. But I'll tell you where they lose me, though. They lose me with the piercings. Like, a few are kind of cute, but you really lose me at gauges. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I'm a dork. I'm not a sports guy. You get those big gauges that fucking take up the whole year. I, I just get anxious. They fall out. Two hockey players show up. And it's a realistic fear for a dork like me. But the little ones are cute. It's kind of like a little ear nugget. You know, it's like, it's fine. But like, I had to figure out where to draw the line. You know, where I cut it off. And, uh, well, I don't cut them off, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb, I figured out. I think it's more of a rule of chode. Um, if I can fit my dick in your earlobe, that's too big. I'm out. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna finish while I'm in there, but I am out. That's, um, you gotta do it, I don't know. You know, I, I say all that shit. I don't know if I'd actually go through with it if I dated a girl with gauges. Cause like, what if that's my fetish? You know, like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna find that out. Like, my dating profile was bad enough. Like, recently divorced. You kinda, you know, a lot of girls are okay with that one, surprisingly. I don't know, God is dead, whatever. But like, <laughs> but like, I gotta come in your earlobe. That's getting more ghosts than Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> We've been talking about them a lot tonight. They make a lot of ghosts. They, uh... Now here's the thing, my, the stick up I'm about with Johnson and Johnson isn't even that like, people close to me OD'd and died or anything. Like, if anything, all the people in my life that have overdosed because of Johnson and Johnson, they all, coincidentally, are my, like, grade school bullies. Because, again, super fat. So for a while, for a while, I was like, whoa, am I the cursed magic fat kid? You made fun of me. You're getting it. But I, 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 it hit me, that's not the curse. The curse was that they didn't die back then. I don't know. Like, oh, thank God you guys laughed at that one. Uh, loses a lot of crowds on Long Island. Uh, Speaking of school, and I don't know, like, I feel like I was the last generation where it was, I'm not proud of this, it was tolerated, like, using the word gay as a pejorative for everything, like, this is gay, that's gay, you know, that's just how we grew up. Uh, real quick, make some noise if you know Dragon Ball Z. Yeah! So I like Dragon Ball Z, and some gay dudes were into professional wrestling, and, um... <laughs> But that was what it was on the playground. Again, I'm not proud of it, but it was like, Dragon Ball Z's gay, pro wrestling's gay. And here's the thing, guys, I grew up, I've matured. I got a lot of gay people in my life I love a lot. And I've come to the conclusion that we were on the money. Both those things are super fucking gay. <laughs> They're both about ripped guys getting sweaty, doing one-on-one -on -one wrestling. Like, it's a lot of phallic imagery. It's pretty gay, I don't know. Uh, and also, I mean, speaking of gay, uh, do we have, uh, I love that transition. Uh, speaking of gay, do we have any Marines in the house? Any U.S. Marines? Okay, that, she's not a Marine. I, know that. I gotta ask, because like, if I, I, if I do that bit and don't ask, I need, I need an escort to my car. Um, no, there's a, a buddy I do stand up with, and I, I was really curious one day, I'm curious by nature. Not that curious, I wasn't trying to fuck him. And um, I, I, was, I wanted to know what his experience was with gay dudes in the Marines. And he goes, in my experience, I haven't run into a lot of gay guys, but we have a saying in the Marines that there's nothing gayer than the straightest Marine. So I had to do some digging into that. We're right into a gay man's asshole. And uh, now I Googled around and apparently about like 25% of the Marines are fucking around with torpedo chambers, you know what I'm saying? Like, 25% of them are gay. 
And uh, I kept digging, and I think it's even crazier. They have a platoon in the Marines just for the bottoms. They call them the submarines, and that's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> And apparently most of them are stationed in Guantanamo Bay on torture duty. You know, you get on that no-fly list, you think you're going down to Guantanamo, like, I get my nails pulled out, might get waterboarded. But instead, it's just like a bunch of sass. They're not even sodomizing you, they're the bottoms. They're just, they're just bitching at you, I don't know. Weird. I, uh... I don't know, I think, I don't know if it's the divorce had anything to do with this, or I'm just growing as a person, but I feel like I've been relating to women a lot lately. Give it up, ladies, let's hear some noise. I, give it up. I, uh, it occurred to me recently, ladies, also make some noise, not if you like this, but if you've been told to smile more. Yeah, big, I love that expression, you're like, mm. It's not good, you don't like it. Nobody likes it. Apparently, it was like the N-word for white women before, before Karen came around. It got superseded. Uh, but I empathize with women on that one because uh, I got a very special person in my life that tells me to smile more at least once a week. Uh, my fucking mom, guys. She's... <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> No, I, I'll, I'll do the impression for you. It's like once a week I'll come home from a gig and she's like, Brandon, you'd be so handsome if you just smiled more. I, 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 it hurts. I gotta clap back. I'm like, you know, mom, you'd be way less of a cunt if you talked less. Yeah. <laughs> Two can play at that game, mom. I learned from the best. <laughs> I feel like the other way I've been really like empathizing with women lately, I feel bad that y'all lost Roe v. Wade last year. That was pretty bad. Everybody benefited from that. <laughs> but like, I, I disagree that it's like the worst thing to happen to women in the last 20 years. I think one worst thing happened. There was Roe v. Wade, and then there was the shake weight getting to market. Like, talk about losing rights. Talk about losing respect with every pump. That's a bad... Like, that's a product invented by a 50s house husband who's like, honey, you can finally work out. Now it's going to benefit me. Like, it's just... It's a weird one. I feel like I'm not one to talk on the, on the fitness end of things. I spend most of my life a big fat fuck. And, uh... I don't know, guys. Like, I did keto to lose, like, 60 pounds about 10 years ago. And the thing about keto is it's uh, kind of easy to do. It's, it's kind of easy to do. Big major food groups, you know, it's... it's uh, Fat, protein, and a ton of Adderall. You need it. It's part of it. It's like having a bacon, egg, and speed sandwich in the morning. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Can I get something? Oh, I'm fucking around. <laughs> I, uh, I, did, uh, I did Taekwondo as a way to try to lose weight as a kid. And uh, I achieved, I got really good at Taekwondo, but achieved none of my actual goals. I didn't lose any weight, and I got none of the Dragon Ball Z powers. You know? I could, I could stand on one foot for like, ever. Flamingo style, you know? It's I don't know, throughout like my older years, like I, I also wasn't super active. I did like one bit of kind of rigorous activity a year. Uh, Y'all know about the MS walk, right? So, terrible disease. Pretty good walk of them. I don't know. I got. I did it a bunch growing up, and uh, I don't know, guys. I, I. I was. I grew up fat. I didn't know what it was like to win a race until the MS walk, because there's so many people with MS doing the walk, and I was smoking them every year. It was like, and I'd pass him, and I'd be like, you're welcome for the money. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you at the finish. Like, <laughs> uh, I got banned. <laughs> they, they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all. <laughs> so I actually, I started my own walkathon to compensate. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what we're raising money for. You'll figure it out. But we, uh, for this gentleman, uh, who we got? Gentleman in the back. Probably those guys in a few years. <laughs> We're calling it a step in the right direction. And I think we're doing really good work, guys. You know, running an erectile dysfunction walkathon, you know, as a charity, it's 
hard work, guys. There's a lot of stiff competition in the charity game. But I promise you one thing, we are gonna cream them. I, I'm taking donations, first step in the right direction, just behind governors, in the rain, cash only, no receipts. Uh, it is a real thing, I swear. I don't know. I don't know, I love doing that. I, uh, I, I get been saying, I grew up like super dorky. I, uh, do we like Transformers in here, or am I the only one? That's never happened before. It's never happened before. I'm wearing joggers, I can only get so erect. Like, it's bad. No, I love Transformers growing up so much that my dad started questioning my sexuality. And I, and I was like, oh, what, you think I'm, like, you'd have a problem if I was gay? And he goes, no, son, I just don't want you fucking the car. Like, <laughs> it's not like a hit with the ladies either, because, like, I bring home six figures a year, but they're all action, baby. <laughs> not the kind they want, ever, you know? <laughs> and one weird thing I've noticed about being a Transformers fan is there's a lot of, this is real, a lot of trans folks are into Transformers. And that's fine, that's cool. I don't give a fuck who else likes giant robot car guys with me. But like, I don't know. I just don't want them thinking that like you could take any hormones and turn into a truck. We don't have that yet. Cause I, look, if they have that, I'm getting it. Fast travel's sick. Like what? And I, I get looking up to Transformers. They're all like 20 feet tall. Like it's just what you do. Uh, you guys are smart. That is a dumb joke. <laughs> it's a pretty dumb one. But again, it's, they're not good for dealing with the ladies at all. And I, uh, I went to my dad a few years after he thought I was fucking the car, and uh, I asked him for some girl advice. I was like, "What? Well, I got I was in that, like late high school and getting no traction with the ladies." And he just kept hammering home one thing. He's like, "Son, girls like car guys." And I was like, Dad, I got all the car guys. I got Bumblebee, Jazz, Sideswipe, Sunstreaker, Hot Rod, Mirage, Cliff Jumper. I, just, I got all the car guys, man. It's doing nothing for me. Uh, like the cherry on top with me and dating, it just fucking makes it so difficult. For the most part. Uh, all right, we got a good response on Transformers. Am I the only train weirdo in here? Who the fuck said yes? I will get the governor's owner to kick you out. That's dumb. <laughs> that was the best response I ever got on trains. She had the audacity to say yes. Either way. Either way. I love trains. And I, I feel like us train guys just get like a really bad rap. You know, for a few reasons. I think the first one is we stopped tying up rods on the tracks a long time ago. That's a silent movie era thing. It was bad PR. We don't we don't do that anymore. It was a fun pastime, but you know, we're past it. And then the other like problem being a train guy is like when you're single, you go into a bar, somehow they see your train pin and everybody knows you're in the trains. And women just leave you alone. They're like, he's getting enough pussy. He doesn't need it. Like Oh, you guys called my bluff. The, re the real stereotype is everybody calls me autistic for being into trains. Oh, were you going to say it? Imagine that. I, look, this is the thing. All right, you can shut the fuck up now. Um, no, here's the thing. I don't care if people call me autistic. It's a dumb stereotype, but I, I don't give a fuck. Uh, true, truth to story. I forgot how to words for a second. We're rebooting. One of my best friends in the world is on the spectrum, and I found out about the stereotype, and I got so excited. Somebody wants to go to the transit museum with me for the first time in my life. So we're hanging out and I go, hey man, you're supposed to say yes to this question. Uh, you wanna hit a train museum sometime? Guys, my autistic friend looked me in the eye for the first time in 20 years. And he goes, bro, what are you retarded? I don't wanna go to a train museum. And look, I know I just said it, but we were in a Denny's. All those waitresses' kids are autistic. I'm just, look, it's just a fact. I thought they were gonna spit in our eggs. It was more like they put eggs in a, little, in a bunch of their spit. Like, it was, they were upset. 
So I said to my buddy, I'm like, can you not shout autistic in a crowded diner? And he goes, I'm autistic, bro. I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. And he goes, faggot, retard. And I can't quote him on the N word. I can't do it. He has that ability. I do not. <laughs> I'm not getting away with that. Not tonight. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow night. I don't know. Uh, I got to say, though, they come full circle. Like, being a train guy right now specifically is a little weird with all that stuff going on in Ohio. That's not cool. That's like, that's trains for evil. Like, we don't, we haven't seen trains for evil like that since the Nazis. They, you know. I know, I know. I'm bringing the room down, but. Like, once you've been to Auschwitz and you actually see that gate, I, I've been there. Anybody else been? Yep. Fuck yeah. yeah. There are worse museums. I'm just saying. Like, it's, um, that's what they're doing now, by the way. They're not still, you know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, true story, my, my high school sent me to Auschwitz, and I don't even know what I did. They skipped detention, straight to... I don't get it. Um... Okay, so what we were really doing was singing Hebrew songs at Auschwitz on purpose. <laughs> and it was actually a very tasteful experience and very like depressing and oh my god, heavy, but like it was a beautiful like memorial concert that we did. Uh, it was jarring though because it's such a downer of a you know place, <laughs> and it has way more in common with like Disney World than you want to expect. <laughs> Bear with me, like the general just anti-Semitism in the air of straight Disney, like that's. <laughs> but the the gift shop on the way out that was uh, yeah right you don't expect that I was mad. <laughs> I saw the gift shop on the way out. They made us go through it. Like, it's not like, you know, the red velvet ropes, like every other museum. And it made me mad. Like, before I got into the Auschwitz gift shop, I'm like, what the fuck are they going to have in there? Like, shower head keychains and, like, oven paperweights. If I see a temporary tattoo, I'm burning this place down. And I got, to their credit, it's, it's as tasteful as I think it can be. You know, like, you get in there and it's a bunch of, like, coffee table books and, like, art but then like postcards, like who wants, who wants an Auschwitz postcard, right? Cause I bought 50 and I can't move them. It was a, it was a terrible investment. I'll, I'll be selling them out back along with taking donations for a step in the right direction. Uh, I, I did get one to send home to my aunt and uncle and uh, totally forgetting that that aunt was a Jew that married into the family. Woo! Yeah, that was a bad idea. Uh, but she's Jewish, she has a sense of humor. I just shouldn't have signed it, wish you were here. That's fucking bad. Oh, thank God for that second wave. <laughs> Folks, I'm ending it right there. Thank you so much for coming out to my first half hour. You saw go before you. Give it up to your host, Hugh, and Governor's, Com Governor's Comedy Club for hosting us. My name is Brandon Lacaruba. Have a great fucking night. Give it up for Brandon, guys. That's the show. Did you have fun? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, what's going to happen now? The waitress is coming around. You're going to get a pig ticket. Just give that to the guy on the way out. That's how you leave the place. You're going to sleep here with me. Um, yeah, you can go to govs.com. Catch some uh, shows in the future. If you want to hit me up on Instagram, it's The Logic. I can get you guys some free tickets. You know, and uh, that's it, man. For I'm Hugh Murray. And for Brandon Lockruba, have a good night.